I fucking love these. <laughs> These videos only happen because of the support and help from our sponsors. Support the companies that support us. Right. 2023 KTM 890 Adventure, not R, just the normal one. 200 mil travel, 105 horsepower, and rally mode. The first thing that's super noticeable has been the new TFT. Most importantly, you can get to that button easily just skids and wheelies mode <laughs> the bike's only been out three years so it doesn't need in ktm's eyes a whole load of changes but they have tried to listen to what people have wanted from them and put a few things in them so most obviously from the riding position other than the tft is this new screen that hole in there so that you get a reduced buffeting so you don't get your helmet battered around on the faster roads and the whole idea is to give you a bit more weather and wind protection which if I sit bolt upright, I can see over it. If I'm getting wind in my face, if I hunker down a little bit, it's giving me a nice little bubble to sit in out of the cold morning air, which is a nice balance. There'll always be people who want a taller screen and people who want a shorter screen, but this is a good kind of middle of the road option for me. There are going to be countless discussions about this new demo mode feature that KTM have talked about. So demo mode means all of the options that come you can get for this bike so all the options you would normally have when you bought the bike you had to tick and pay extra for they all come fitted as standard for the first 1500 kilometers after that if you want to keep any of them you have to pay for them so it's not that they're charging you extra you're just getting stuff for free in the first place and then you you pick and buy the bits that you decide you want. Like if you wanted to buy it and have the quick shifter in rally mode from standard, you'd pay the extra from them straight away, then it makes no difference. So it's as it was. And I know some people kind of resent paying for electronic features, you know, stuff that's already in the bike, they just have to turn it on, but I get that. But the whole point is that, you know, traction control, ABS, there's a there's a cost associated with developing those items. It, you know, it takes, hundreds and hundreds of man hours it costs a lot of money to develop them so if they left them all on everyone's bike as standard with no extra charge the cost of the bike would be two grand more so <laughs> anyway that's boring we want to talk about skids and wheelies and <laughs> that wicked parallel twin engine that's still properly good fun got a new two-piece adjustable seat Got some swanky new bodywork. The front's actually quite a lot stronger than it used to be. He's going to say it. He's going to say let's off-road any second. Let's off-road. <laughs> A little bit of off-road but again it's KTM so we've immediately left the gravel road and gone onto a nice little dirt track which is cool <laughs> light off-road KTM you're funny yeah a bit of sand to start. That'll wake him up. What I like about this is despite the fact that this non-R bike is the, the touring model, if you will, it's the travel model, they're still giving it 21 inch front wheel, 18 inch rear, they're still giving it proper off-road capability. They haven't put cast wheels in it and, and sacrificed all that. Which means that when you do take your travel bike, you end up in a track you didn't want to be on or something that's a bit gnarlier than you intended. 
you've got the best chance of getting through safely. You're not having to deal with a really low sump guard or cast wheels that you've got to be careful of on the rocks. It's, it's still absolutely capable of taking whatever you throw at it, just with slightly less suspension travel, so slightly less speed than the full R model. But if getting there's your thing rather than speed, that's where this is an absolute gem. For some people, the lower seat height and shorter travel will make it easier off-road doing technical stuff. Seat's surprisingly low too, to be fair. Um, I can get both feet down tiptoes, comfortably, comfortably on tiptoes, if that makes sense, or one foot down, super easy. A few times now, I've come to a stop and put a foot out and the floor is actually closer than I expected it to be, which is a, a pleasant sensation for adventure bikes. Lots of little changes. Change to the front fork, it's got split left and right damping. It's got a little change in the setup and the rear shock's been calibrated to match 200 mil travel front and rear. They've changed the dash and made a few functions easier to access. Done things like the, with a MTC mode now, if I press and hold down, It'll automatically it'll jump to switching the traction off completely rather than having to go into the menus to find that. And now as you change from road to off-road to rally to, to rain or street to off-road to rally to rain, it actually changes the ABS setting as you go through. So it will put the ABS into the correct setting that you left it in for whichever of those modes you choose, which again just saves a little faff. There's so many options on bikes these days that the less faffing you can do, the more riding you can do. And this new bodywork got big forged alloy parts now to support the whole front end. So the whole front end is much stiffer, much more stable. So when you put in nav brackets and GPS and road books and stuff on it, it stays a lot, a lot more stable than rather than flapping around. It's got to give it a bit more strength in a in a drop or a fall as well, rather than just snapping the, the tower off. I think the new bodywork looks good as well. I, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the, the floating bug eye front end. I like the, the infill panels. But there's not really a great deal other than that. You know, the engine's the same, the chassis is the same. Already one of the bikes that got dropped, the new sump guard has, has protected the, the tank and the tank sides. It was in sand, to be fair. <laughs> but you can see where it fell as exactly where the sub guard protected it so if you dropped it on a rock provided it's strong enough it should should be a, an advantage over the older smaller guard and importantly it hasn't lost its ability to do big stupid wheelies which i'm very happy about i'm actually turning it off rally mode now and i've put it into off-road mode sometimes sometimes you don't want to go far out everywhere most of the time <laughs> But if you're on a big trip, like a, a tour, right, in four or five days, it's not it's not the sort of thing where I like to ride full gas, flat out, hard for four or five days of touring in a road. Like, little mad moments, but sometimes it's nice just to cruise along, enjoy the pace, enjoy the ride, enjoy the scenery. And that's where off-road mode's quite good for being able to just dial it back a notch. It still lets you slide, but it catches the slide, doesn't let things get all snappy and out of shape. You can just ride super smooth everywhere. It's really enjoyable. It still likes the party. Oh yes, don't we all? Oh, motorbikes. <laughs> off-road motorbikes. I do really like going off-road. It is so much fun. And with an adventure bike now, that doesn't mean you can't have fun on the road as well. That's that's the, the greatest win of our time. Now you can have a bike that's fast, cruises on the motorway at 80 mile an hour, 770, 70 mile an hour. Handles properly, you can be lent right over in the corners so the pegs touch down, and then you can dive onto the dirt and do jumps and power slides. Such a good time for motorcycling. Sports bikes are better than ever. Adventure bikes are better than ever. Hallelujah. <laughs> what a bike this thing is <laughs> and I mean for what we've done today which is my sort of riding a mix of fast tarmac and good trails this thing has been absolutely fantastic and unless you're racing or doing rallies or cross-country events I'd urge you to reconsider the R 
and think about getting just the straight 890 because that shorter travel, that lower suspension, lower center of gravity means you get your feet to the ground earlier and the technical stuff. And it means on this fun adventure bike terrain, this sort of drifty gravel road, it's that bit more predictable, that bit better balanced. Gives you confidence to push a little harder in the deep zones. And then when you flick back onto the tarmac, it's just an absolute weapon. <laughs> and certainly in the midway segment, yeah, it's uh, very competitive at that stuff. I think you could argue that the Tiger might be a bit smoother and more accomplished at this road stuff, but, but the decent handguards are keeping the wind off my hands. I've got heated grips. There's an option for a heated seat as well. So there are plenty of ways to, to touring it up. The luggage kit looks really nicely made. Big boxes. They actually look really cool with the boxes on as well. Can I pick some holes in it? Sure. When I stand up and ride technical terrain and move around a lot on the bike found my heel catching the side stand a little bit annoying it did cut the engine once when i was in a bit of a particularly weird body shape but only one but that, yeah that that could be better for sure every now and then it seems to turn the traction control back on it's much easier to turn it off now but that's one other little irritating niggle but apart from that i yeah i can't really fault it for an adventure travel bike it has got a very naughty heart <laughs> I love these. <laughs>